Live from San Jose, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data Silicon Valley 2017. Good afternoon everyone, this is George Gilbert. We're at Silicon Valley uh, Big Data uh, in conjunction with uh, Strata and Hadoop World. Um, we've been here every year for six years and I'm pleased to bring with us today uh, a really interesting panel um, with our friends from Attunity, um, uh, Itamar, Itamar and, Car and Karian, which um, we were just discussing, um, has a, it's an Israeli um, mm -hmm. uh, name, mm -hmm. but uh, some of us could be forgiven for thinking Italian or Turkish. <laughs> um, it Itamar is CMO of, Atu yeah. of Attunity. We have Chris Murphy, who um, is from a very large insurance company with, that we can't name right now. And, um, and then Martin Liddell from Deloitte. And we're going to be talking about their experience building uh, a data lake, a high value data lake, and uh, some of the technology choices they made, including uh, how Attunity fits in that. Mm -hmm. So maybe kicking that off, um, Chris, perhaps you can tell us what the big object objectives were for the data lake in terms of what, were, what outcomes were you seeking? Okay, uh, I'd start off by saying there wasn't any single objective. It was very much about putting in an enterprise, a key enterprise component that would facilitate many, many things. Uh, so when I look at it now, I look back with wisdom, hopefully, I see it as you know trying to put in data as a service within the company. So very much we built it as an operational data lake, first and foremost, because we wanted to generate value for the company and, and very much convey to people that this was something that was worth investing in on an ongoing basis. And then on the back of that, of course, once you've actually pulled all the data together and started to curate it and make it available, then you can start doing the research work as well. So we were trying to get the best of both worlds from that perspective. Let me follow up on that just really quickly. Um, it sounds like if you're doing data as a service, it's um, where like central IT as a function created a platform on which others would build applications and you had to make that platform uh, mature at a certain level, not just the software, but the data itself. And then at, at that point, did you sort of show prototype applications to different departments and business units? Or how did the uptake, you know, how organically did that move? Not so much. It was very um, much a, a fast delivering, agile set of projects working together. So we actually had, and we used to call it the holy trinity of the projects we were doing. We had putting in a new customer portal that would be getting all of its data from the data lake, putting in a new CRM system, getting all of its data from the data lake and talking to the customer portal. And then of course at the back behind that, the, the data lake itself feeding all the data to these systems. So. We were developing in parallel to those projects, but of course those were not small projects, those were sizable beasts. But side by side with that, we were still able to use the data lake to do some proof of concept work around analytics. So interestingly, one of the first things we used the data lake uh, for in terms of uh, on the analytics side was actually meeting a government regulatory requirement where they needed us to get an, an amount of data together for them very quickly. Uh, and when I say quickly, I mean within two weeks. We went to our typical suppliers and said, how long will this take? About three months, they thought. In terms of actually using the data lake, we pulled the data together in about two days, and most of the delays were due to the lack of uh, strict requirements where we were just figuring out exactly what people wanted. And that really helped benefit their, demonstrate the benefit of having a data lake in place. So, Martin, tell us how Deloitte, you know, with its sort of deep bench of professional services skills, could help make that journey um, easier uh, for Chris and, and for others. So, um there were actually a, a, a number of areas where we uh, where we engaged. Uh, we were um, all the way from the very beginning engaged in uh, working on the business case creation, and um, and uh, really where it uh, s sort of came to life was when when we we, we brought our technology people uh, actually in to uh, to work out uh, a roadmap of how to uh, how to deliver this. As, as, as Chris said, there were many moving parts. There were uh, therefore many uh, teams within Deloitte as well as that were engaged uh, with different areas of specialization. So so from a uh, web development perspective, on the one hand, to uh, Salesforce um, uh, CRM in the background, and then then obviously uh, my team of sort of data ninjas that came in and and uh, and built the data lake, um, uh, and. Uh, 
what we what we also did is is, is actually we, we, we partnered with uh, with other third parties uh, on the on the testing side. So, so we covered uh, really uh, the, the the full life cycle there. But if I were to if I were to follow up on that, it sounds mm -hmm. like um, because there were other systems being built out in parallel that depended on this, you probably had a. Um, less de fewer degrees of freedom in terms of what the data had to look like when you were done I think that's uh, that's that's true to a degree but but, but when you look at the delivery model we employed right it was it was very much agile delivery and and we um, uh, during the elaboration phase we, we were working together very closely across these three teams right so um, there was a certain amount of well, not not freedom in terms of what to deliver in the end, but but uh, uh, to to come to an agreement as as to what good will look like uh, at the end of a sprint uh, or uh, for a release. Um, so um, there were no surprises uh, as, as such, but uh, still uh, through the. Um, the sort of flexible architecture that we had uh, built and, and the flexible model that we had to delivering, we, we, we could also respond to, to changes uh, very quickly. So, so if the, the product owner uh, changed uh, priority uh, or made priority calls and, and, and changed priority items on the backlog, we could uh, quite quickly respond to this. So Itamar, maybe you can help us mm -hmm. understand you know, how Attunity added value that other products couldn't really do and um, how it made the you know the overall pipeline uh, more performant. Mm -hmm. Okay, absolutely. So the the project that uh, again this Fortune 100 company was putting together uh, was an operational data lake, and it was very important for them to get data from a lot of different data sources, so they can merge it together for analytic purposes, and also get the data in real time, so they can support real time analytics, use information that is is very fresh. And that data, again, many financial services and insurance companies came from the mainframe, so multiple systems on the mainframe, as well as other systems. And they needed an efficient way to get the data uh, ingested into their data lake. So that's where Attunity came in as part of the overall data lake architecture to support an incremental, continuous, kind of universal data ingestion uh, process. And uh, Attunity uh, Replicate lends itself to enable to load the data directly into the data lake, into Hadoop in this case, or also uh, if they opt to use Kafka, go through mechanisms like uh, Kafka and others. So I provide a lot of flexibility architecturally to capture data as it changes in their many different databases and feed that into the data lake so it can be, be used for different types of analytics. So just to drill down on that one level, because mm -hmm. many of us would assume that you know the replication log that's um, that Attunity um, sort of models itself after mm -hmm. um, would be similar to the event you know the event log that um, Kafka works sort of or models itself after. Mm -hmm. So is it that um, if you use Kafka, you have to modify the source systems and therefore it puts more load on them, whereas with Attunity, mm -hmm. you are sort of piggybacking on mm -hmm. what's already happening, mm -hmm. uh, and so you don't add to the load on those systems? Okay, great question, let me, let me clarify it. Okay. So first of all, um, they, Kafka is a great technology that we're seeing more and more customers adopt as part of their overall uh, big data um, and data management architectures. It's a public subscribe basically infrastructure that allows you to scale up data messaging of data and storage of data as events, as messages, so you can easily move it around and process it also in, uh, in a more real-time streaming fashion. Attunity complements uh, Kafka and actually is very well integrated with it as well as other streaming type of uh, uh, ingestion and data processing uh, technologies. What Attunity brings to the picture here is primarily the, the key function and technology of CDC, change data capture, which is the ability, the technology, to capture the data as it changes in many different databases, do that in a manner that has less, very little impact, if any, on the source system and the environment, and deliver it in real time. So what Attunity does, in a sense, we turn the databases to be live feeds that then can stream either directly, either we can take it directly into uh, the Hadoop platform, such as Hive and HDFS, or for ex or we can feed it into Kafka for further processing integration through a Kafka uh, integration. So again, it's very complementary in that uh, sense. Okay, so um, maybe give us, um, Chris, a little a little more color on the before and after state. You know, before these multiple projects happened, and then 
the data lake as a sort of a data foundation for these other systems that you're integrating. What, what business outcomes changed and how did they change? Oh, that's a tough question. So uh, I've been asked many flavors of that question before and the, and the analogy I always come back to is it's, it's like we're moving from candle power to electricity, right? There was no single use case that you know, shows this is why you need a data lake. It was many, many things they wanted to do. And in the before picture, again, that was always just very challenging. So like many companies, we'd outsource the, you know, the maintenance support uh, operation and running of our systems to third parties, and we were constrained by that. Uh, and you know, we were in that crazy situation where we couldn't get to our own data. And by implementing the data lake, we'd broken down that barrier. We now had things back in our control. So I mentioned before that POC we did with the regulatory reporting. Uh, again, you know, three months, two days. It, it was night and day in terms of what we were now able to do. There's um, m many banks are beginning to say that their old business model was get the customer's checking account and then you know upsell, cross sell to all these other related um, products or services. Is something happening like that with insurance where if you break down the data silos, it's easier to sell other services? There will be is probably the best way to put it. We're not there yet. Uh, you know, it's a road, right? it's a long journey, and we're doing it in stages. So I think we've done, what, three different releases on the data lake to date, mm -hmm. and that's very much on the, on the plan. We want to do things like nudges to demonstrate to the customers how you know, there are products that could be a very good fit for them, because once you understand your customer, you understand what their gaps are, what their needs, what their wants are. Uh, again, very much in the roadmap, just not of a part of the market. So to help us maybe understand some of the near-term steps you want to take on that roadmap towards that nirvana. So. The, and, and, and what the role that Attunity as a vendor might play and Deloitte, you know, as a professional services organization to help get you there. So Attunity uh, obviously was all about getting the data there as efficiently as possible. Uh, unfortunately, like many things in your first iteration, it's still, our data lake is still running on a batch basis, but we'd like to evolve that as time goes by. Uh, in terms of actually then making use of the lake, one of the key things that we were doing in that was actually uh, implementing a client matching solution. So we didn't actually have an MDM system in place for managing our customers. We had 12 different policy admin systems in place um, and customers could be coming to us playing any role. They could be a beneficiary, they could be the policy holder, they could be a power of attorney. And we could talk to somebody on the phone and not really understand who they were. You get them into the data lake, you start to build up that 360 view about who people are. Then you start to understand what can I do for this person. That was very much the so we say the, the journey we're going on. And Martin, is have have you worked with? Um, are, are you organized by industry line, and and is there um, sort of a capability ma maturity level where you know you can say, okay, you have to master these skills, and at that skill level, then you can do these, you know, uh, m m you know, richer, richer business offerings. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, first of all, yes, we are organized uh, by, by uh, industry groups and, and, and uh, we, we have um, a sort of a common model across, this, uh, uh, across industries though, uh, that describe what you just, uh, what you just said. And uh, we, we, when we talk about insights-driven organization, this, this, is, this is really where you are sort of moving to on the maturity curve uh, as you become more mature in uh, using your uh, analytical capabilities and, and, and turning data from, from uh, from y y you know, uh, just data into uh, information into a, into a real uh, asset that you can um, actually monetize, right? Um, so where we where we went with um, uh, with uh, you know Chris's organization um, and uh, actually with many other li life insurers is actually so sort of the first step on this journey, right? Uh, th what Chris described around sort of uh, for, uh, for the first time being able to um, see. Uh, a customer centric view and and, and see what uh, a customer has in terms of products and therefore what what they don't have right and where there is opportunities for cross selling this this is sort of a, a first step into becoming more proactive right and uh, there's then actually a lot more that that can 
can follow on after that. Um, but but yeah, uh, we, we, we've, we've got maturity models that that we that we assess against, and 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 uh, we sort of gradually uh, move people, organizations to uh, the right place for them. Because uh, not not for, uh, for not it's not going to be right for every organization to be an insight driven organization to make this huge investment uh, to to get there. Um, but uh, most companies will benefit from nudging them uh, in that direction. Okay. At, on that note, um, we're going to have to leave it here. I will say that uh, I think there's a, section, a session 2.30 today mm -hmm. um, with uh, the Deloitte and the unnamed insurance team uh, talking in, in greater depth about the case study um, with uh, Attunity. And um, on that, uh, we'll be taking a short break. Uh, we'll be back at Big Data Silicon Valley. This is George Gilbert, and we'll see you in a few short minutes.